my own little world. Soon after entering, I made my way to the line. My eyes danced to the crescent-shaped scar adorning the young clerk's neck. With the gentleman in front of me, he spoke of camouflage and machine guns of earlier times. When he only saw his family through the lens of a webcam. When he first learned what it took to be a man. And when he learned what true loss really felt like. It's my turn. I step forward, stare directly into his eyes, and wonder how he's ended up here. His face doesn't give much away. He's painted a cordial smile, and the air between us seeps with the remnants of small talk. But I can't help wondering, I wonder, if he knows more than he's been told, more than he's settled for. He's more than the orders he was commanded to obey. He's more than the lines he was expected to cross. He's more than the monster he had to come to survive. I can't help but wonder how he's ended up here. Overseas, he's right. But now that he's home, on friendly soil, he's thrown into department stores, positions, and temporary jobs. I can only hope he's better off than his friends, tossed into psychiatrist's office. But I wonder, I wonder what memories might decide to plague his dreams while trying to figure out which pill alleviates painful recollections, which part of his past has become back to haunt him, which friend's death will flash before his eyes as he tries to sleep, norepinephrine firing through his brain like the gunshots he had to deliver. The US government is so quick to draft, but hasn't learned to welcome home. They hide their veterans in the dark corners of side courts, allow themselves to get lost in the depths of their own mind as the PTSD eats away whatever is left. They fight for countries who don't know what to do with them afterwards. What both need to learn is that there is life after war. 